Today, we are blessed to present that insightful conference entitled We are transparent in the eyes of the universe, part 2 of 3, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on December 22, 2019, in Taiwan, also known as Formosa. Even with our education, we can survive with our hands, with our work, with our own labor, yes. So there is no need to depend on people. The more dependent you are, the more you don't feel good. You will feel lowly, you will feel more, you know, like, not yourself, not your dignified self. I'm not talking about housewives or mothers who still need to take care of the children at home, no. You are doing work as well, because being a housewife is a lot of work, like 24-7. Yes. I'm not talking about the SMTV, you know, who work in-house or anywhere, because they are doing their work. Even if they don't earn the money, they are doing their work. They earn in a different way. I'm just talking about people who are trying to take advantage of others' goodness and Generosity, that is a no, 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 no. You lower yourself desperately and terribly. You have no self-respect, no self-esteem when you do that. You should always do something to earn your own upkeep. I'm not talking about the people who live in, in the ashram and take care of the ashram and not earning, I mean, income from outside. I'm not talking about these people. They are also working. They keep the ashram clean, you know, or tidy, or you know, whatever they do in the ashram. That is different, okay? Even though they don't have income, but they are taking care of the ashram, of the place where everyone else comes to feel comfortable and welcomed, yeah, and be at ease to meditate, yes? Like the retreat people this week. I'm not talking about the people who stay in the kitchen and just cook every day for everyone, even though they don't earn any official income, but they are working. Do you understand? Yes. And also, I'm not talking about the husband who, instead of going out to earn money, his wife goes out to earn money and he stays home to take care of the kids or the house, you know, washing dishes, washing clothes, tending the gardens, cleaning the house. That's also work. Housework doesn't excludes men. He's doing his job. If he does it well, you know, I mean, devotedly doing his best. That's also work, hey? We just all have to do something. We just don't deliberately live off other people's uh, generosity and good heart. That is no good. That creates bad karma for ourselves. The next life we have to come back with or without initiation, to be a slave, to work day and night, to work three, four, five jobs, and not earn much, etc., etc. And people will not have respect for you because of the karma you accumulate this lifetime or whatever lifetime. No good. If you have to depend on other people, you really will feel very aggressive inside. And outside you have to talk sweet and tell lies sometimes just to make other people feel, the one who you depend on feel good, feel flattered, so that they continue to help you or keep you or whatever. And that is no good for your dignity, for your conscience. You feel, you feel terrible, whether you know it or not. Mostly you will feel it. You will know it. And that's no good at all for a dignified person when you can do work yourself. I'm not talking about truly handicapped people who cannot do anything anymore. I'm not talking about them. That's the karma they have to bear. But if we are still able to work, then we have to do work. I mean, concentratedly, devotedly, truly respect that work and do it every day as if this is the last thing we do before we die or the first thing we ever do and can never do it again. We have to revere our job. That is what we call Kama Yoga in India. It is even a kind of yoga practice. We just incorporate all that into the Kwanin 
practitioner's lifestyle. That's why I tell you, we have to do charity, we have to go out and help people, we have to do our job 100% devotedly, reverently, as if it's an honor given to us in this lifetime to repay the kindness of all beings, not just this world, but visible beings, invisible beings, animals, insects, even the worms, we own them. They air the earth so that people, the farmers, can do farming work. Yes, even the little bees huh, who pollinate the trees, without them we wouldn't have that many fruits and food that we have right now. So now people realize that and they begin to raise bees, to protect bees now and forbid many herbicides or insecticides that harm them. They don't just harm us, they harm those little tiny beings who are our helpers, who are diligent workers for our survival, for our food. My God, we are all beings on this planet. Everything you see or not see, we owe them everything. We also, of course, the angels who take care of us, even though they are in the shadow world, they are taking care of us. They help us in time of trouble, even though we don't see, we owe everyone. Everything that we see or not see. So whatever work we do, we have to do it concentratedly, devotedly, and reverently. Not to talk about helping the master with something with maybe a water tap or water filter. Or you have to keep the master alive and healthy in order to help you, no? So it's not really a favor you're doing me. You do it only once to help me with the future or connecting the water, but I'm doing it often for you, many years, and continue. I don't say anything, and I do it with all my heart all the time, all my love, all my heart, all my devotion to you. So we are helping each other, at least. Not saying that must uh, rescue you or anything, five, six generations, nothing yet. We're helping each other. I remind you of some good teachings hmm, that I know from heavens or from the past master books and explain all things to you, help you to be a better being. Huh? So we're helping each other. So you're not doing me a favor. So don't do it in such a careless and disrespectful way and harmful way to the body and mind and psychological and psychic beings of the master because you accumulate very bad karma for yourself. The master might be harmed temporarily or even might be dead, but your karma would never be able to be washed away if it's a grave offense. Everything you do, you do it for yourself. Please remember that. Even a bad thought about master is also you doing it to yourself. Today I don't come out and many people don't feel happy, and all that karma will be upon you, not on the master. The master cannot clean that, because you have already been taught right and wrong. You have to do your homework. Every school, every learning has an exam, and the people who don't pass the exam have to either stay in the same class or get out of the school after repeatedly not progressing. Similarly, in the spiritual practice, there are tests. And if you fail, then you have to do it again. And if again, then (laughs) you cannot be in the assembly. Nowadays, it's like that. Not like a long time ago, I let people keep learning, learning, keep repeating, keep uh, you know, improving. In the school, you cannot fail many times. Here, in the spiritual school, is the same. This mountain area, this ashram that you are in right now, is a very, very sacred place, very important spiritually. So if you don't keep your mind and, and heart and speech pure and try your best to keep it, then you will be out. Sooner or later, either you out yourself or something happens that you'll be out. 
if you are selfish or arrogant or trying just to grab things for yourself, for your own benefit, even the blessing for Master, you will be out. Here, you have to be always selfless, pure in speech, thought, and action. In Sihu, it's similar, but it was more tolerant. Here, it's different. Because this place has been acquired, bought, by the sweat and tears of many disciples, and also master of finance. It's not an inexpensive place. This is quite expensive, even for me. My money is used for so many different purposes, and for SMTV. So every month, I have to spend a lot. Even sometimes, some financial things coming by different ways, very little. And we still need that to repair every little thing that we have in the ashram. You know, when we first came, everything was kaput, even toilets, pipes, septic tanks, the roads, the roof tiles falling off. Yeah, many things. And it will continue to be like that because everything in this material world will corrode at one time or another or be damaged. Even the cave that I love to stay in, in the beginning is corroding now and it's dangerous for me to stay inside, so they kicked me out. <laughs> I mean, practically saying, Master, you can't stay there anymore. They even hire the expert to come in to look and it's, it's all eroded inside. That's why the water leaking in from inside and from underground and etc. And sooner or later, it will maybe collapse. I'm just worried about all the beings in the lake, that uh, the erosion may harm them, but I don't know what else we can do right now. Uh, maybe uh, demolish it. I was thinking to repair it just for souvenir, you know, to keep it <laughs> for your for your children to, to see in the later generations or something. The place that Master lived in and worked in, sleep in, in with the dogs, <laughs> but it seems like it will take a lot of time to be able to rebuild it, and I'm not sure if it's worth it, so I'm still thinking uh, what to do. Even demolishing it might cause some damage for the beings in the lake. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I have to study more about that or just let it be. But at the moment, we cannot let anybody visit it inside in case it collapses any time. Well, my dogs told me that before, but <laughs> I was thinking, oh, never mind, it still looks good. <laughs> but then they made another cave for me, you know, a more modernized and more livable. So maybe I will, I will use that instead. Yes. Just for your sake, I keep myself healthy and alive. So please don't be jealous of me. You have no reason at all. Everything I do is for you, for the world, for the universe. Even though you don't feel that way, even though you don't see it that way, even though you don't think that way, it is like that. I have no reason to tell lies to you because I don't want anything from you. That's logical to you or not? Yes. Good. Suppose you think that I tell you lie, this lie, because I want you to worship me, to stay with me, so that I feel like, oh, I have a lot of people worship me, then you have to think again. Why do I always screen out hundreds of people at a time even? As you know very well, at least 1,000 people are not allowed to come to New Land at all at least for what I can think of right now, maybe more. Yeah? Mm. So think about that, okay? I have no reason to lie to you. If I really wanted more disciples, more people to worship me, to be crowded by people, to feel like a big shot, then why do I burn so many, huh? Understand? Yes. Is it logical to you? Yes. All right. So please think about it and banish every thought of negative tendency to 
envy me or to wish me no good. Even in thinking, it will have bad effect on you because I can protect myself. But I don't want you to continue this way, okay? Whoever that might be. Don't think that I don't know what you think inside. And even if I don't know, heavens know. You, I, all of us are transparent in the eyes of the universe, in the eyes of God and the heavens, even low heavens, astral heavens, They do know what we think, and especially higher heavens. They know everything about us. That's why they can help us. If they don't know, how do they help us in time of trouble? If Master doesn't really know, how can she come to help you when you have accidents or when you pray? She comes. She helps you. Even if you don't see, you feel it, and you know the result. So you are very transparent. All of us are. So even if I'm bad, heavens would know. So I don't dare. (laughs) Even if I want to be bad at all, even if I wanted to lie to you, I don't dare. I know better than that. I don't practice for myself, benefit, nothing. For my family even. You know, I treat my family the same as you. Even if you want to treat my sister, especially VIP lifestyle, no. I say, no, please don't. So that they don't feel too arrogant. Okay? To other disciples. They have to earn it. They cannot just be treated like a privileged group of people when they didn't earn it. They have to earn it. They have to be worthy of that. And even if they are, there's no need for them to be treated special like you have planned to do. I don't want that. I want them to be humble, normal, practicing well, and enjoy their normal life. Normal treatment, because otherwise other people will get jealous also and the negative energy will be no good for them, not just for them to be arrogant or anything even, or even not jealous and treat them too special and they will feel too proud. Then forget to be humble, forget to practice. To be treated special out in the public is a kind of curse. You see, people want to harm the Buddhas, even though he never did anything. But to anybody, all he did was preach to help people, to elevate and meditate it. When while begging, even. And even wear hard clothes. Not even wearing luxury clothes like my design I have to wear now, or even jewelry or anything. Mm-hmm. 